So this is your packet tracer. Uh, you can see my screen, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, these are all the menus that you have over here. Undo, redo. You can save whatever simulation changes that you make over here. Okay. Um, down here, you have got all your network devices. Okay. These are your network devices. You can see these are the routers, the different kinds of routers that we have. The circular object is your router. And we also have switches. Okay, these are the different kinds of switches. Uh, observe your routers are circular and switches are uh, square shaped or rectangular. Okay, uh, your routers are used for connecting different networks together. So, how do we use them? Just click and drag over here. There is your router. Same goes for switch. How do we use them? We just click whichever switch we want and then click and drag over here. There we have got our router as well as our switch. Okay. Uh, we also have end devices in the form of PC and IP telephone, voice over IP device, uh, your TV, wireless tablet, and so on. Okay. So you can also take a generic computer and put it here. You can also use different components. And you can also use uh, connections in the form of different kinds of cable. Okay? For example, you can take a cable for connecting your computer from here to your switch. Which port of the switch you want to connect? Let's say here. So just like a real environment, the amber light will be shown. And then this amber light, after some time, will be converted into green. That means there will be connectivity between both of them. Okay? Same goes for connection to a switch. So the lab exercise will be given to you every week, starting from uh, tomorrow. Okay. First, you have to learn the concepts. Okay. And after that, you can actually um, uh, do the solutions. Now, for example, the details of all these components, for example, your switch, what are the details? You see, when I click on it, I can see the details of your switch, how your switch actually looks, looks like. So if you see over here, the switch has got ports. How many ports do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times two, twenty-four port switch. So you can actually connect twenty-four computers to this switch. Okay? And when you connect this to the power, the switch, when you connect it to the power, what happens is immediately it goes to the command line interface. How do you see the command? This is the physical view of the switch. This is the command line interface of the switch, the place where you type the command. Okay? For example, in order to start checking the details, you type enable. It takes you inside the switch. Okay? So all these kinds of things you will learn. For example, inside the switch, I want to type show version. It will show me the version of the switch I'm using, the details of the switch. So when you learn uh, your, your, uh, your Cisco interconnecting operating system commands, this is what it is all about. OK? Then we close this. The same goes for your router. You see, they are green. Now, that means there is a network connectivity between both of these, okay? This would be your router. This is the physical look of your router. You can even switch it off and switch it on. You see, this is your command line interface of your router. Uh, would you like to enter the initial configuration? No. 
here is your router. Here again, I type enable, then it takes me to the router prompt. Okay, here also I can type show version. It will show me details about the router. Okay. You can also go to your physical device router. You see, I'm going to switch off my router. You see this button? I just switch off the router. There, it's off. Now, if you go to Scylla, as a command line interface, it says device must be powered on. Can you see that? It's amazing. It's a great simulation software. Okay. For your PC, you can also enter the application, desktop application, IP configuration, uh, command prompt, open a web browser. Okay. All these things you can do on, inside your uh, system. Okay. So this is your packet tracer, and this is where we will be learning our introduction to network. We'll be learning how to create a viable network whereby uh, a computer can communicate to another computer through a connection uh, with these two devices, primarily a switch and a router. A switch is when you want to give an IP address uh, you give an IP address of the same uh, when you give an IP address to this uh, of the same uh, <clears throat> uh, pattern perhaps that's the correct way to use uh, then you put it all in the same network in the same switch remember the switch has got 24 ports okay so all of these IP address will belong to the same uh, range, maybe instead of using the word pattern, we use the word range, the same range of IP addresses. So they can all be connected to the switch. Okay. The uh, so yes. What about IPv4 and IPv6? What's that about? Yes, we'll come to that. Uh, All right. When you give an IP address, you see each of these ports, you can give an IP address. Can you see that? So there are two ways of giving an address. One is IP version 4, and the other one is uh, IP version 6. The initial IP that we had was IP version 4. For example, my computer over here, I can give an IP address. I go to desktop. I go to IP configuration and I give a IP address 192.168.1.1. Okay. The moment my subnet mask for this uh, type C address would be by default 255.255.255.0. Okay. Oh, okay. So this IP address is called IP version 4. Now, we'll be learning more about them in detail because there will be some mathematics involved, some calculation involved, converting from uh, uh, your decimal numbers, because this is in decimal. So you have to convert from decimal into binary, okay? You have to know uh, what would be my correct IP address, what, what is the host portion, what is the network portion, okay? So all these things I'll be teaching you as we go along the course, okay? And how do you give subnet mask? Why, what is the necessity of having a subnet mask? Okay. So the problem with IP version 4 is that uh, in an institution like Curtin or in a, in a big institution, you can give IP version 4 addresses. But when you go to the internet, public addresses, uh, IP version 4 is, is running out. Uh, we don't have enough. That is why they have come out with IP version 6. Okay. So having public addresses is a better option to have IP version 6. Anyway, you should be learning both. Okay. How do I create an IP version 4 and how do I create IP version 6? Okay. Yes. So what we'll be doing, my dear students, in our case, 
um, I was thinking of, I will show you the lab, I will do it, okay, some labs, and some labs, at least the first lab, I will do it for you. But the other labs, I will ask you all to do it and then show to me. Now, how does it work? You see that when you do the lab, let's just add another computer. Yeah, and another connection connected to fast Ethernet, that is your network device, to two. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, you should be able to ping from this PC to this PC. If you can ping successfully, that means you have a network connection. That means your setting is correct. This is the same for your skill-based exam, your final exam, which is your skill base. If you cannot ping, you fail the unit. You have to repeat it. And this has never happened before. But then, as Sakib said, uh, this happens to my students, so perhaps it may happen first time in this semester. You never know, right? <laughs> Hopefully, it's not Sakib, okay? So, <laughs> okay. So, so, what happens is you have to practice and practice and practice to make sure that the two computers have network connectivity and they can ping each other, okay? That's the whole point of using Packet Tracer. You become an expert in networking when you use Packet Tracer, okay? Uh, remember, when you, you, you give the same IP address, you can connect them with a switch. The moment you have got different IP address, then you need this device, a router, okay? Now, what I want you all to do is download your packet tracer, install it on your computer, and start using it. The first time it will ask you for your username and password, but after that, it should be okay. It won't ask you any more details after that, okay? Uh, these are the different kinds of cables that we have, okay? Uh, we'll be studying some of these. For example, this is just a connection cable to the computer monitor. This one is a straight through cable, which I've used over here. This one is a crossover cable. You may ask, what is the difference between straight through and crossover cable? Uh, it is the connection, because each of these cables consists of, if you look at the cable, it consists of eight individual wires. And the way you arrange those wires, for example, for uh, straight through, both the ends have the same uh, lining of uh, wires, okay? Same color of wires. But crossover, the arrangement is different, okay? For example, if I have PC to PC connection, look over here, I have a PC and I have got another PC. Now I want to connect them directly with each other, you see? I'm going to use a straight through cable, connect from fast Ethernet. Fast Ethernet means your network connection at the, at the end, the NIC, okay? To fast Ethernet, you see? Red, red, no okay. connection. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Sorry. Uh, generic. Generic. Now let's go to the cable and select crossover cable. And sorry. Yeah, crossover okay. cable. Anything else? Uh, uh, you can also uh, method, uh, mail us later, DPS. Uh, uh, please close your microphone. Thank you. Now you can see in crossover, you can connect cable to cable directly. Can you see the green light? That means there is a network connection. You can ping from here to here. But if you use a okay. straight through cable, you cannot do the connection. Make sense, my dear students? So when you're connecting a PC to PC directly, you have to use a crossover cable. Okay. So these are some of the basics that you will learn uh, when it comes to packet tracer. Okay. Yeah. We'll do this very soon. Uh, 
we'll do it tomorrow with the first lab, okay? All you have to do is uh, make sure that your microphone is working for tomorrow. Um, do your lab and show it to me, and then you are, you are gone, okay? You can leave, and uh, as long as you have shown me that you have successfully completed the lab exercise. Your lab exercise, I will okay. upload it to Moodle as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So that brings us to the end of this. Yeah, Thank you very much.